Just and guide us, dear Jesus. Your spirit would guide us, dear Lord, tonight, Lord, as we get into your word. You, Lord, that you would illuminate, Lord, those things and enlighten us, God, with the words that you Thank would you, have Jesus. us to receive personally, Lord. Lord, that you would speak to every heart that's yes, listening, Lord. dear Jesus. You would open up our eyes, open Thank up our Jesus. minds and our hearts to receive, Father, in the name Thank of Jesus. Jesus. We take authority and dominion over every in hindrance, Jesus every name. blockage in, in the Jesus. name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we lose, dear Jesus, Thank Lord, the word, the revelation of the word, oh God, to go forth in Jesus' Thank name we pray. Jesus. Bless Thank those that are listening, God. Lord, that you'll talk to their spirits yes, and their Jesus. hearts, God, whatever it is that you're wanting to say to them personally. And Lord, we will receive it with gladness you, in Jesus name. In Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Again, we started with our lesson one from Genesis one, and we will end up in revelation, um, within about 12, um, 11 more weeks or 10 more weeks. Um, want to send out a shout to pastor Narvice in Oregon, our pastor in Oregon. Um, I want to say hi and I'm glad he's part of the rock church and Amen. We have the have a church out there in uh, Beaverton, Oregon, and then also we're um, getting a new member of the Rock Church. It's not clear through yet, so I won't mention the name yet. But out of North Carolina, excited about um, that possibility and um, uh, being a part of the Rock Church, um, even though it's long distance. Hey, what a wonderful technology world that we have uh, that we are able to bind together even when um, right. you're so far apart. You know, um, there are churches everywhere, but there are some churches even in our organization or our church or our, our faith, I'll, I'll just lay it out on us, that do not pursue the word of God like they um, need to or pray and fast like they need to. So um, if they're hungry and they're looking for someplace else that will lead and guide them in the Holy Ghost, so, so be it. And if it's us, so be it. Um, I welcome them with all of my heart. And um, they will uh, have accountability um, under this ministry. You that have been under my ministry for years or even for a short time, you know there's accountability, but that's biblical. And um, I don't take that lightly, the responsibility that her and I have, and then the ministers that are under me that have. So God bless you. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about from the fall to the flood right now. And um, Adam and Eve is outside the garden. And um, um, uh, matter of fact, let's just go ahead to the scriptures right now from Genesis um, 3, 16 and or Genesis 4, 1. I've given you both of those scriptures. My wife just might read one of them, but she'll tell you which one she's reading. Yeah, I'm going to read uh, Genesis 4, verse 1. We read uh, 3, 16 last week. You can refresh and look back on that um, when you're able. It says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. All right. So the she started to have children. And um, I want you, and then we're going to go from where the fall to the flood. I want us to go to the difference between the two brothers. Because in life today, we want to know that it's pleasing to God. And what's not pleasing to God at the very beginning from even Adam and Eve we seen what was pleasing to God and what wasn't and even after fall after the fall the the, the function of, of of him coming back to redeem us I, I know I'm kind of jumping the gun it's already fallen in place right now even though they didn't know it um, um, there's a lot of time that we're going to go spend through this that they didn't know who the, the didn't know the name of God was. Of course, we know his name is Jesus now because of the New Testament, and we're going to tie both of those together so you could see scripturally that we are in one accord in unity with the Holy Word of God. The Rock Church strives the, to be so point on with the Word of God. I, I'm not talking about organization. I, I, I'm part, we're part of an organization and I love the organization I'm part of. Been a minister with them for oh, 25 years plus, mm -hmm. maybe 30 years now, I can't remember. And I uh, pastor in uh, more than half of those years, uh, 20 plus years. And I'm very thankful for them. But I teach and I preach from this, not an organization, 
not a manual, but I preach from the Holy Word of God. And so, therefore, I go as, as much and as close as God shows me in the revelations that he gives us, and then um, we'll give that to you. But the difference between the two brothers, um, it's just in, in verse 2 on chapter 4 that she just read, so she'll read that also. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay, so there was a difference between the two brothers. Um, um, it began, he began to call upon the name of the Lord. Um, in, um, oh, I'm jumping the gun now. But Adam um, was um, the father of Abel, which he was uh, more of a hunter, and Cain was more of a gardener and uh, more of a, um, a vegetarian. I don't know if he was a vegetarian, but he did more of a gardening and growing vegetables and, and growing um, things like that. So um, our next step that we would go into then would be um, what was worship taught during the, in Genesis. They have already started to understand about worship. Worship is a very key thing to um, the ministry to the church and for the church to give God. Worship is more than singing. Worship is more than clapping our hands. Worship is more than just running or dancing or whatever. Worship is actually living according to the will of God and um, making the sacrifices in his will. So go ahead and read that. Okay, and it says verse three. So look there with me. It says, in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? All right. Um, I see Stephanie saying hi to Sister Smith. Um, it's hard for us to see that far <laughs> away, but... Um, hi, she's all the way in San Antonio, <laughs> which um, she used to be a member of the Rock Church, and we sure yes, we miss her still. Yes, we do. Um, but um, the sacrifice uh, that was accepted and it was rejected. Let's go to Genesis 4 and 7. And if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay. Now, he wanted a blood sacrifice. Um, there's a reason for that, and there's requirements for that. Uh, Revelations 13 and 8, um, and then there's going to be Hebrews 9, 22, and Hebrews 11 and 4, and um, um, whatever scriptures that she decides to read. But I'm going to mention that again. There's three scriptures. Again, we're not exhausting all the scriptures. We're just giving you some scriptures um, to be able to go off of and then go into your own study. Um, Revelation 13 and 8, Hebrews 9, 22, and Hebrews 11 and 4. So which one are you reading? I'm going to do, um, I may need to do a couple. Okay. Revelations 13 and 8 says, And all the inhabitants of the earth will fall down in adoration and pay him homage, everyone whose name has not been recorded in the book of life of the Lamb that was slain in sacrifice from the foundation of the world. So there was a blood sacrifice, and then the ultimate sacrifice was the Lamb of God, which was the, um, uh, the one that died on the cross for us. So that's why um, we use the name of Jesus when we baptize people, because um, he, is the, he was the sacrificial lamb. He was God manifested in flesh, and um, that's why um, we do that, because it says in the Holy Word of God, that is the remissions of sins when we baptize in his name. Right, and if you remember, before I read this, if you remember last uh, week when we were talking, he, he had to kill a, uh, make a sacrifice, kill a lamb, so that he could clothe them. And so there, that sacrificial lamb brought the righteousness, the clothing of covering of our sins. And so when they were outside of the garden, they knew he had instituted the way that he wanted to roll their sins ahead. And so he had told them. And then, so you've got two brothers here that learned the same 
thing. They were taught the same principles in their life that they were supposed to have a blood sacrifice yeah, to because cover their sins. Because their mom and dad did leaves. Right. And that wasn't acceptable to God. Right. So God killed a, a, a lamb and then clothed them with it. Okay, great. Yes. And now verse um, Hebrews 9.22 says this, and almost all things are made by the law purged with blood. So the blood, it's the blood covering. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. And without shedding of blood is no remission. 11 of 4 of Hebrews, I think she's going to go ahead and read that. Um, just, just the thought, that even in the natural world, um, we born a son, and um, I should say she did, um, but he has my blood. He has the Father's blood. Um, Justin um, had a, um, Ellington. Well, he has the Smith bloodline all the way through. So through this bloodline that he's starting, you see where it's actually starting, our Redeemer is actually starting to reveal itself. The blood is being applied. And then we see the day on Calvary when the sacrificial lamb of the world um, died on the cross. So um, Hebrews eleven four 4 says, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he is being dead, yet speaketh. Okay. So there's a punishment of disobedience. In Genesis four thirteen and 15, let's go ahead and see what the punishment was of this disobedience. Okay. 13, yes, okay. Um, and Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. Wow. Wow. Well, Genesis 4.25 says, Men who walk with God. Um, we're going to go ahead and read that. We're going to go, um, we're going to see about Seth on verse 26 of that also. But Genesis 4.25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For God said, She had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Um, and let me back up just a minute. That was the first murder when Cain, I think we somehow, um, I don't know if we passed over that scripture, Did but I miss that? Uh, it was the first murder because Cain was wrought in his spirit um, that, the, that the Lord accepted Abel's sacrifice and not his. When, when God would have accepted Cain if he had done it the way the Lord had asked him to do. We can't bring God what we think he requires. We got to bring God what he requires. So we can't say, okay, Lord, you know, I'm going to do it my way because that's iniquity. That's us, that's us making decisions for ourselves. We're not the giver of salvation. He is. So we have to follow salvation according to his plan. Amen. Um, and then uh, let's see. Uh, Verse 26, and to Seth to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos, and then man began to call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, Enoch um, in Genesis 5, 24, and then um, Hebrews 11 and 5. We're looking right now at men who walked with God. And Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God, and he was not, for God took him home with him. Okay, and then there was Noah. Um, again, there was two scriptures on that other. She didn't, that's, she only had to, I mean, she can read what she wants. So she only read one of them, but it was um, um, for those scriptures. For Enoch was Genesis 5.25, 5.24, and then Hebrews 11 and 5. Now Noah in Genesis 6.7, and then you go, it also talks about it in the New Testament, 11 and 7 in Hebrews. Genesis 6, 7. I'm going to read Genesis 6, 7. I'm going to do it in the Amplified. It says, So the Lord said, I will destroy, blot out, and wipe away mankind whom I have created from the face of the ground, not only man, but the beasts and the creeping things and the birds of the air, for it grieves me and makes me regretful that I have made them. Okay. I'm going to bring up a point if I can Please. here. Enoch, 
Enoch walked so close to God that he was just translated right up into heaven. And I think that's just beautiful. I love that story. It doesn't say a whole lot about Enoch, but, but, it, but it, it said enough to let us know that he walked with God. He pleased God. He was with God and God just took him. So he never died. He never saw death, um, you know, as we know death. And then, so here, here men followed God, but then there comes up a people that uh, were not following him. And that's where the Lord was greatly sorrowed because they were evil. They were doing evil in the Lord's sight. And that's where he said that he would need to destroy and wipe out mankind and basically start all over. And he was repenting basically for ever making them, ever, ever doing it because of the way that they had followed evil. Right, and that was the fall to the flood and now we're getting too close to the flood but there was a, a righteous family that was preserved because of um, uh, Noah and Noah began to build the ark which was absolutely crazy at that time there was no rain uh, moisture came up from the ground and then um, there was moisture um, with the fog and everything would give some moisture but they did not have rain like we know it today so um they didn't know what it was they had no clue so when he talked about rain and the flood and um obviously they he sounded like he was crazy um, but when there was the anointing upon him it really pulled for the people but their iniquities and the sins of their lives all they did was make fun of the minister and of of, of the man of god kind of sounds like today um, a lot of people don't believe in hell. Um, they just can't perceive it. They don't see a God sending them to hell. Well, God will not send them to hell. Their lifestyle sends them to hell. God saves them from hell. If we repent of our sins and we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and we're filled with his Holy Spirit and we start to walk a holy life and start walking a relationship, uh, kingdom-minded life with them, um, they were saved from that. Um, that's my choice, and that's your choice. And people have heard anointing. Um, you know, I think uh, of people that have been a part of the Rock Church, uh, kind of alluded to it just a little while ago, but they, were, they have been in, many of those people have been in a mighty move of God, and they felt the anointing. Some of them prophesied, and some of them um, interceded and all that. And I don't know how that they push away those things of God now and make mockery of the man and the woman of God and of the church. But it's still going on today. So um, we're not in this, we're, this is not the first rodeo. Noah uh, was um, in, this, in this state by himself. So um, faith and obedience um, required in Genesis 7 and 1. And, um, you want to talk about the ark? Yeah, okay. yeah, let's That's talk about the ark. Now, there's people say there's so many different ways of salvation. I, I'm, I disagree with them, I biblically disagree with them. I know there's a lot of different organizations, even in our own organization, there's people that believe certain things and um, look at different ways. But um, if you go, if you're not in this book, you're biblically wrong. If you're teaching and preaching and believing for salvation according to this word, not what man has twisted or think it says, but what it says, then you're okay. I don't care what your name of your door says above your door. I don't care if you're Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, Nazarenes, um, uh, um, whoever you are, apostolic, whatever. Um, I don't care what name you, your title is. If you're preaching and teaching the word of God without any man's interpretation to it, then you're going to be okay. So um, I'm saying all that to say this. The ark had specific things that had to be done right. to save the world. And the world at that time was just eight people. And then, of course, we know the animals. But if he would have been an inch off or if he would have used the wrong wood or whatever he would have done, they would have been lost. And they would have drowned just like the others would have drowned. 
So that's what I'm saying. There's only one faith, the Bible says, only one faith, one baptism. There's only one, one salvation. The Bible says that very clearly. Only one. They, there's no more than one way to make heaven your home. Um, the building of the ark in Genesis 6, 14 through 16. I don't if you want to go ahead and read that. It says, And make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, which is a... That's 100, 450 100. feet long. Yes. Uh, which you said was how long? Uh, um, it's a... a, a well, the, the, oh. what, what did you use to that's, get that? Uh, it was 150 yards. 150, 150 yards, so that's a, a football yards. and a half field. A full football field and a half. So it says, The breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make. Which is 45 feet wide and 75 feet high. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, and the height of it 30 cubits, and a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. There was one door, one window, and, and three floors. Okay. Again, she used the cubics and stuff as the biblical principle, that, but in, in our understanding, it was 400 feet long, 45 feet high, and 75 feet wide, not one one inch longer or shorter or higher or lower. If there was that way, if they would have not done exactly what the word of God would set, said it would have been, as he spoke to Noah, then they would have drowned just like anybody else would have. I want you, I, I want to push that point because I, I'm so tired of hearing, oh, we all serve Jesus and we're all going to go to heaven. Well, that, uh, I'm sorry. Um, how are we all going to go to heaven when we live like the devil? And we have no love for him except for what we want from him. And what, he, um, what we want him to do for us instead of us living for him. Been married to her almost 36 years. If I lived that type of life with her... She wouldn't have stayed with me that very long. If all I wanted something was from her and this and that, and I, I demanded this, but when I did not want her or I did not need her and I went and did whatever I wanted to do with anybody else, um, that would have been very pretty for me. <laughs> I probably would have met death earlier. <laughs> so there's vows. I mentioned it last, last uh, I don't know if it was Sunday or last week. Our last Wednesday, there's vows I made to her on our on our wedding day. I have not broken those vows. Why do I think if I, I'm able to break the vows I gave God when I repented of my sins and when I was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I was filled with the Spirit, that I have the right to break my vow and still believe that I'm going to make heaven my home? Right. Just thought. Go ahead. Verse 17, it says, Behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life, and from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wives and thy sons' wives with thee. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Thou shalt be male and female of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, of two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And take thou unto thee all of all flood that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Mm. Wow. Faith and obedience is obedience. required. Yes, absolutely. Faith and you got to believe. Right. I mean, he had right. to believe that the Lord was going to destroy the earth um, with rain, with water. Right. He had to believe to do that. He had faith. Just to have faith won't save him. Right. The devils even have faith that the Lord is great and mighty. They know because every time we mention his name, they bow a knee. 
they have faith to know that they are not able to overcome the hell that's been prepared for them. They know that. Now, the faith that Noah had has to be the same type of faith that we have, believing that God's instructions are true. So, um, in obedience, you have to obey is required. Genesis 7 and 1, if you'll read that. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house unto the ark, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. Well, you, you want to go ahead and read 11 and 7 in Hebrews? Ah, uh, yes. One plan of an escape. One plan of an escape. There was no lifeboats. There was no many arks. There was only one plan of escape, and he had to follow it to the T. I know I'm hitting this um, really hard and I'm hitting it um, fervently. The reason why is because someday we're, this earth is going to be destroyed. And I'm preaching, and I hope I'm not preaching to the people of Noah's days that's not listening. I'm preaching my guts out, telling you that there is a salvation for when the world comes to an end. Jesus Christ is going to take his church away, but we have to have faith and obedience. Um, you go, I'm going to read Hebrews 11. I'm going to start with verse 6 because it's very important. It leads okay. into that. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, which goes with what you were saying, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're diligently seeking him, he will reward you. Um, because he wants you to seek him. And verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Okay. Now, the one plan of escape um, is, she just read um, Hebrews 11 and 7. There's also scriptures in 1 Peter 3.20 and 2 Peter 2.5. Did you want to read any of those? I'm going to read 2 Peter 2 okay. and 5. And it gets to the part where it says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing to the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Mm, wow. Wow. Hey, Lori. I think she's living in North Carolina and went to high school with her. Good to see you. Her brother was my youth pastor. I love Craig. I love Kim. They are great people. And I love you and love your husband. I, I just love your family. They're great people. So God bless you. Um, let's see. Let's go to the place of safety. Genesis 7, 15 through 16. Again, we're going from Genesis. And this is our second lesson. So we're in the in the part of uh, from the fall to the flood and then 11 weeks 10 weeks from now we'll be in revelations go ahead okay i'm gonna read i'm gonna read a few after that just to kind of give some more basis it says that they went unto noah into the ark two and two of all flesh wherein is the breath of life and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god had commanded him and the lord shut him in they must say the Lord shut the door. Noah didn't shut the door because I really believe that the compassion in Noah's heart when he began to hear people crying for salvation after, after that was over and the Lord had said enough, I believe that he probably would have wanted to open that door, but he had no control over that. This was the Lord's doing. He shut that door. And it says, and the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the water increased and bare up the ark and it was lifted above the earth and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the waters. Amen, amen. And um, during this time, Noah received a promise and that's in Genesis 9, 9 through 13. Genesis 9, Genesis 9 through 13. Nine through 13. Okay, now we're, we've, we've gone to where they were on in, in the water for 
uh, you read, make sure you read those scriptures in between there. There's a whole and, lot we're leaving um, out. Oh, yes, um, just for sake of time, but make sure you're reading that. But when they uh, the, the ark finally rested um, upon, um, I believe it was Mount Ararat, that where it had rested, that it said that, um, what was that third verse again? It was... Um, um, which one are you talking about? Uh, nine. Verse nine. Sorry, I had my finger, but okay. I moved it. I don't know where you're 13. At. Okay, okay. I saw it. Okay. I set my bow, a rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a token or sign of a covenant or a solemn pledge between me and the earth. Okay. So he set the rainbow. And unfortunately, the world today has perverted that rainbow. Um, that rainbow, I do not give that to perversion. That promise was given to the people of God into this world that he would not destroy this world again by a flood. Right, which is verse 15. Verse yeah. 15. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Okay. Now we're going to go to, um, again, like I said, there's a lot, and we're giving you a lot of scripture, and, but not very much compared to what it could be given. And there's a lot of things in between that could be studied out um, and that's why I've asked you to get your pen and paper. Um, if you don't have a Bible, again, if you can't afford one, you get a hold of us. We'll send you one of these Word of Flame Bibles. Um, but um, the thing is, is that um, most of us have phones or some type of electronics. There's free apps like crazy for Bible. So um, you're welcome to, to do that. But um, Matthew 24, 37 through 44. Um, you mind reading that? We're going to mankind is judged. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. And know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. We gotta watch. We gotta watch. We gotta be expecting it, anticipating it, waiting for it. Verse 44, therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Amen. I want to give some comparison of the days of Noah and to um, the Son of Man. And then you can even compare that to what's going on today. Um, partying. Um, Genesis 6, 5 through and 11, uh, the days of Noah is partying. And then the Son of Man is Philippians 3, 17 and 19. Okay. It says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Wow. Marrying and giving in marriage. Matthew 24, in the Son of Man, in the day of Noah, marry and giving in marriage. The Son of Man, Matthew 24, 38, 39. 24, 38, 39. Forgive me for being so slow here. Um, 38, 39 says, For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Which means it's going to come when we're not expecting it. Right. It's going to happen. No man, they're not going to be able to tell you, oh, you remember that book they right. put out about God was coming back in 1988. And then 89, reason why he did in 1989. Right. So Somebody's then, just making a buck. Right. Yeah. So when no man knows the day or the hour when the Lord's coming back. We've just got to be ready and watching. Right. Right. The, the thing is, is that, uh, let me... Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, and you can do it um, on the site here. But I was, I believe I was told, uh, I've been in um, South Texas now for pastoring here for almost 15 years or 15 years, that um, 
after five times that you're married, you can't get married any longer in Texas. But there are there is one individual I do know personally that I was told that he was no longer allowed to get married because he's been married so many times. You know, people get married and they just they just they give up or they throw in a tower, say, well, you know, she's not pretty any longer and throws it, you know, throw her, throw her away or, or he's gotten fat or whatever the reasons are. They're, they're just like the day of Noah, they were giving in marriage and, and there was so much it going on that no one was being faithful and to the vows that they took with their first marriage. Uh, wow, I keep coming back to those vows of, of marriage. Uh, I made vows again almost 36 years ago to this beautiful woman beside me. I haven't broken one and she hasn't broken one with me no. again. How do we think or believe that we break our vow with God that we're going to enter his kingdom? I don't know how that's even possible, how anybody could perceive or believe that if they break their vow to God. But thank God right now we're living in mercy and grace. Right. We can so we can ask God to forgive us for all our sins and our iniquities and stuff. And that's why I'm trying to speak to you today. Um, and, and even from the Old Testament is preparing the way of Christ where he redeems us from our sins with his mercy and grace and gives us a chance so that we can be saved from this world and we can keep our vows with him. Yeah, we struggle. I failed God many, many times. Some of the ones are um, on Facebook, Facebook Live right now watching this um, know that I failed God. I was a such a bad backslider, um, nasty backslider. But thank God for his mercy and his grace that he forgave me of my sins. Now that doesn't mean I continue into the sins that I'm doing. That meant I needed to turn away from the sins. That's what mercy and grace gave me the opportunity to turn away from them. And I'm very thankful for that. Um, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they built. Kind of sounds like today, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Luke 17, 26 and 30. It says, and it was in the day of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Uh, likewise also, as it was in the day of, of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they building. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes. And the day of Noah, day of Noah, I, I actually did a lot of driving around today, did a lot of praying. And I looked at all the, now you can hardly tell that we're in some type of pandemic here in this area. I don't, I don't know of anybody that's not working because of it. Um, this area is flourishing with finances and we're seeing so many new homes being built, new businesses being built. There's so much road work that's being done in this area. Um, the, the money is just, um, uh, it's very good here. Um, high school graduates have made very, very good money in this area without any type of college education. And there is, there is such, in, in somewhat ways it grieves me, and I ask God to forgive my city and forgive our church and forgive me that we have put finances and monies and homes and our cars and our boats and, and all everything else before, before him. I don't want a house, my job, or my car or my boat or whatever it is to come between me and God. Right. I want God to be first in my life. If you'll let me, I want to read this verse that backs that up. Please. It said, uh, it, it goes from verse 30, what we just read, uh, which was Luke 17, 26. It says, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And it said, in that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. In other words, this is what you were saying. Don't go back. It says, remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Wow. Thank you. 
ignorant of the coming judgment. Um, Luke 21, 34 through 35. Wow, kind of sounds like today people don't really believe that Jesus Christ is coming back, but it's going to happen. It says, and take heed to yourselves, lest any time your heart be overcharged with surviving drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unaware. Now, I want to say this to the Rock Church. You, you may have walked into salvation and followed that, but notice here it says, and cares of this life. It's very easy for us to get caught up in that. And it's uh, verse 35, for as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Amen. Amen. Extreme wickedness, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. And when I, that comes to my mind, and that's the day of Noah, how I, I just, and I've been in some meetings um, in the, several months ago now um, about um, sex trafficking. Um, boys and girls, women being sold. And it's amazing how even who's all involved in that. And, and people not even thinking twice about selling their own daughter or um, selling themselves or kidnapping and taking somebody else's child away and selling them, shipping them across the country or even just down the street and keeping them. I mean, you know, you've been seeing it and you hear it. It's everywhere. And it's amazing that even I, I've seen where preachers have been involved in this how to God when the world becomes that sad I'm not even talking about politicians I'm talking about you and I I'm talking about the church that's involved in this that's wickedness God forgive us God forgive us Jesus. go ahead I'm gonna I'm gonna read um, 2 Timothy 3 1 through 4 and we'll do it in the amplified because it just breaks it down a little bit more it says but understand this, that in the last days will come set in perilous times of great stress and trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered, lovers of money and aroused by an inordinate greedy desire for wealth, proud and arrogant, contemptuous boasters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affection, callous and inhuman, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct, uncontrolled and fierce haters of good. They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. Wow. And... That's not even in the world, just the world. That's in our churches too. God forgive us. God forgive us of our sins and our trespasses Amen. against you. Forgive us for our idolatry. Yes. Forgive us, Lord. Then the flood comes, the day of Noah and then of the Son of Man, Second Peter 3, 3 through 7. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? I've actually heard people say that. Um, For since the fathers fall asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creations. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Um, whereby the world then that then was, being overflowed with water, perished, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Wow. Sounds like today. So it was water then. And it's going to be fire this time. Fire the next time. I'm going to ask my wife to pray for you um, and, and God to talk to your hearts. I'm talking to the Rock Church right now. You that are visiting us, thank you because we really need to become more kingdom-minded and more soul-minded. There's not an enemy that's against me. Um, even that family that has left, and I talked about a little bit ago, and, and, and the things that has been said about me and, and, and cutting me off and, and making fun and stuff, I do not want to see them go to hell. 
There, there's nothing worth to me for anybody to go to hell for what they have done against me. But you don't get into that type of place unless you have forgiveness from God and understand by his grace and his mercy, he was the only one who could forgive you of your sins. So if I forgive them, then they're, they're able to be forgiven and I'm able to be forgiven. I must be saved. I cannot die lost, but I do not want to live either without a relationship with my God, my God, not the God of this world, not the God of sports, not the God of money, not the God of my job or whatever I'm talking about. The, the great I am in the old Testament, the great I am, they did not know his name then. And then when he was born, we found out his name was Jesus. And I am not, I am not going to allow something get between me and him in his, in my relationship with him. I want to have a relationship with him. Um, before she prays, because I, I just feel like God's going to use her to pray to you. And if she prays in tongues, I hope that she does, if that's what God calls for it. And, um, but next week, it's going to be a little bit, probably a lengthier, um, lesson and we're going to try to um, not go through it quickly but give it enough for you so that you can go back and study again I encourage you to take the scriptures that we've given you and go back and study it for yourself um, we're going to talk about the original languages the beginning of the nations we're going to talk about the time periods of the patriarchs the chosen nation we're going to talk about Jacob and Esau the chosen nation and Joseph the chosen nation we're going to uh, again, like I said, last week we talked from Genesis 1 to up to the place of fall, um, fall of man into the flood. And now we're going to go from the flood and to the chosen generation. Um, so for the, for the chosen nation. So um, again, uh, each time we come before, we're going to see a pattern here that the word of God comes to the place for our great salvation and for the great hope of making heaven our home someday. I'm thankful for that. Without him, I, could, I can't have anything. Can you imagine how many of you Gentiles, were, I'm a Gentile, I'm not a Jew, but this was opened up for us just as much as it was for the Jewish people. We are chosen now. We are chosen. Uh, I better quit. I, I can get into in the um, deeper things and I might lose lose you on that but um, we're, we're going to get to that point further down so I love you I really do um, I, I, I say that because of I, I don't want to see any of anybody lost and I, I want to see each and every one of you on the streets of gold someday and if you don't have a church and if you're in this area you don't have a church please come see us we're at 540 South Main Street in Clute, Texas um, we're on live every every Sunday morning and Sunday night um, on Wednesdays and then on Sunday afternoons with the Spanish um, service um, and Spanish also on Thursday night Bible study. I'm very thankful for our Spanish leaders, Pastor Narvice in Oregon, and then also Sister um, uh, Ruth and Sister Diane here in the in the, our local area. So I'm very thankful for our our um, Latino church that we have. Um, again, Pastor Narvice, and I'm very thankful for him. Thankful for Sister Ruth and Sister Diane also very much. But God bless you. Um, come and be a part of it and join us in Jesus' name. I want to turn the Lord to my wife. You know, the Word of God says that today is the day of salvation, and we have the wonderful opportunity to every day make sure that our calling and election is sure. And so if you have not um, had a relationship with the Lord, you so have the availability right now to start that wonderful journey with him and to start that relationship with him. And so we're going to pray. You know, this thing is going to be wrapping up before we know yeah. it because of the way things look. And, the, the way, and it's not a scare tactic that I'm no. saying. It's just, it's just pure fact. The church is excited about the it. The church is excited. I'm ready for him to come back. To exactly. Get us. And 
I'm not living with fear of that. I, I, I really honestly can't wait for that moment when the Lord takes us. And so if you're on here and you, you have that fear because you're not sure if you're ready, you can be ready tonight. You can, the Lord can help you to, to, we can start that journey even now. And so what I feel to do is we're going to repent together because I need to repent every day. I, I need to make sure that my, uh, there is nothing in my heart, nothing in my mind, nothing in my life that's going to separate me from God. And so then we're just, then we're going to begin to worship the Lord. And those of you that are out there, as you begin to give yourself to the oh. Lord and tell him to come into your heart and your spirit, he's going to fill you with his spirit. And if you do receive it, would you please notify us, let us know so that we can rejoice with you, that we can, uh, we can help uh, disciple you, help you to grow in this thing that the Lord has for you in Jesus name. Father, we come to you right now, dear Jesus. I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins. Lord, that you would forgive me, Lord, for every evil thought that I've had, God. Lord, I ask that you would forgive me for every evil word that I've spoken, Lord, and every evil thing that I have done. God, I ask, Lord, that you would wash us with your blood and cleanse us, God. Lord, that we could be whiter than snow, dear Jesus, like your word says. We are sorry, Lord, for the things that we have done against you. Lord, I want to make sure my calling is sure, Lord, and that my election is sure tonight, Jesus. We come to you, Lord. Let your spirit of repentance, God, fall upon us, Lord, in a way that's pleasing to you tonight, Jesus. Touch every heart that's hearing and listening right now, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let them feel your love. Let them feel your drawing. Let them feel your touch, Lord, in Jesus. Jesus name as you forgive us and wash us away Lord our sins and that's it just ask the Lord to wash you if he brings up something to your mind then repent of that if he shows you or reminds you of something that you've done let's repent of that let's close out this day knowing that we have repented of all of our sins that we have talked to the Lord about it that he is and know that we can receive it by faith the forgiveness for our sins thank you Jesus thank you Jesus we give you glory and honor and praise hallelujah Lord thank you God oh thank you Jesus I feel his spirit is moving where you're at right now and if you have already repented I want you just to lift your hands up where it's comfortable and I want you to say father fill my heart fill my heart with your spirit I want the Holy Ghost, Lord. I want, Lord, to be filled with your spirit, oh God. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I praise you, Jesus, for your spirit. I thank you for salvation, oh God. I thank you for the Holy Ghost, Lord. I thank you for filling us overflowing, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just keep doing that. Just keep praising him. Just keep worshiping and giving your heart to him. And I promise you, he's going to feel you. And if you begin to speak something you don't understand, don't stop it. Let your tongue do what it wants to do. Let it just move through you like he wants to move through you because that's his presence. That's his presence coming into your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for filling us with your spirit, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, you, Lord. Your your Praise grace, your name, Lord. Jesus. Praise Thank your name, you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Thank Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Thank you for you, joining Lord. us tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. She made a statement, Thank and you, I want Lord. to um, say it again, Praise is that God. if you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, that's how you know that you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It's scriptural. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just to speak a language that you, it's not your native language or another tongue that you know of. It could be a heavenly language or it could be another language that you don't know what it is. Uh, message us, let us know. And if you don't, not a part of a church that believes that or understands it, uh, we'll help and guide you with that. And maybe help to find you a church in your area or if you're in our area, um, but uh, we're, we're willing to help you with that. I, w I want you to really study the word. Um, take time and pray yes. with your family. Right. Take time. Take this time and, and get a hold of God because yes. Jesus is coming back for his church soon. Soon and very soon. I want to be, um, be ready and I want to see you ready. 
God bless you. Thank you. So many of you joined us. So many friends that joined us. Thank you so much. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.